My sophomore year in college, my virginity was taken from me against my consent. Over a year later, I reported my assault, and I was put into a process where I felt like I was losing control all over again. I ended up regretting reporting. One in five women and one in 13 men will be sexually assaulted at some point during their college career in this country. Less than 10% will ever report their assault to their school or the police. That means that someone can be a five-time repeat offender and still have a less than 50% chance of ever being reported, much less anything happening if they are. On average, college survivors will wait 11 months before they report their assault. So why don't we report? And why do we wait? There are five main reasons. The first is that we're worried that you won't believe us. And by you, I mean the authorities, I mean jurors, but I also mean our friends, our community. We're terrified that you won't believe us. The second is that we lack some really critical information about the reporting process. We might know where to go, but we don't necessarily know what to expect once we go, once we tell the most intimate details of the worst moment of our lives to our stranger. We're not quite sure where we're going to retain versus lose control of that process. We're not quite sure if what happened to us is serious enough to report. So often when we think about sexual assault, we think about a stranger with a knife in a dark alley, but that's not the reality for most survivors. So we say, well, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. I got myself drunk. I should have said no clearer or louder or sooner. I should have fought back. I should have fought back harder. For is that we don't really necessarily want you to know we don't want you to see us as weak and broken when we have tried so hard to be whole and strong. And we don't necessarily want you to know about the assailant either, because we lack some really critical information about the assailant. And that's not that we don't know who they are. Over 85% of college survivors know their assailant. We could find them on Facebook in a hot second. It's that we don't know why they did what they did. And when you're trying to decide whether or not to report someone, that's really important. We know that they had sex with us when we didn't want them to, when we didn't consent. But we don't necessarily know if they know what they did was wrong. And even if we confront them and talk to them about it, we don't really know if they're sorry. We don't know if they've done it before, and we don't know if they'll do it again. And the scary thing is that there's a very good chance that they have or they will, because 90% of assaults are committed by repeat assailants. But as a survivor, you'd like to think that maybe this was just a nice person who made a really big mistake. Because then we can still trust people. Then we don't have to believe that we live in a world where the people that we trust might willfully violate that trust in the worst way possible. So what do we do about it? One month ago, on two college campuses, we launched an online sexual assault reporting system called Callisto. And the premise is pretty simple. Let's take this process of reporting an assault, which is hard and re-traumatizing and opaque and often fruitless, and let's transform it into something that is actually empowering, something that allows us to regain control over our stories and our lives. It has four main components. The first is just information, right? Really clearly provide information for survivors about where they can go and what to expect if they do report. The second is electronic reporting. There's no good reason for you to have to start this process in person when you can fill out a form online in the safety of your own home and submit it there. The third is being able to create a time-stamped record of your assault. Right? Fill out a form asking you for the same sorts of information that would be needed for investigation, and just save it. So that if you do wait 11 months or longer to report, at least you're keeping your options open. And the fourth is where it gets really cool, because the fourth is matching. 
If you only want to report your assault, if someone else reports the same assailant, that's possible. You put in the perpetrator information, you save it, and if another survivor does the same and was assaulted by the same person, both reports go forward to the authorities at the same time for investigation and follow-up. Now, for a survivor, this changes everything, right? It means that you're not just reporting for your own pursuit of justice. You're reporting because someone is a threat to your community. It means that you have someone else's back and they have yours. It means that you're more likely to be believed. It means that the authorities can actually do something about your report because they can demonstrate a pattern of behavior. And for society, this changes everything too. Because if we could identify and stop repeat offenders after their second assault, we would prevent 60% of sexual assaults. Now, this type of system is called an information escrow, meaning that it's a third-party system that stores information for you until some event happens, whereupon it releases it to another party. And this is just one application of this idea to campus sexual assault. But the same sort of system could be applied to a lot of other issue areas, such as sexual harassment in the workplace, political corruption, corporate whistleblowing, there are so many things that we don't report or we don't talk about because we are ashamed or we are afraid for our careers or our lives or we just don't want to rock the boat. But we would if we knew that we weren't alone. Now, there is no one solution to campus sexual assault. But let's start with believing survivors. And let's start with creating systems that help them through one of the most difficult decisions that they're going to have to make following their assault. This is not just the right thing to do, it also just might be our best chance of creating a world where rape is rare and inexcusable. We will only end rape if we hold perpetrators accountable. We can only hold them accountable if they are reported, and they will only be reported if we create new systems that band survivors together and put them back in control. Thank you. <laughs>